Welcome back to another segment with Bob Tarter of Animology. All right, our wonderful exhibit right now is our Eurasian Eagle Owl, Eleven, <laughs> for those of you that are Stranger Things fans, or we call her L. Now this looks very similar to our Great Horned Owl here. Now that is the same genus, but different species here. The Eurasian Eagle Owl is found in England, east all the way through Europe, through Asia to the Pacific Ocean all the way up into Siberia, all the way down in the Middle East and India. Now that's what's special about this animal here. And when you look at her eyes, you can see the colored part of the eye, the iris, is a little bit more orange yellow than yellow. Our great horned owl here in Tennessee is gonna have just a yellow color to it where she has that orange yellow. That's the main difference. And she's actually larger than them. Now remember that niche, that job that we can see for us. Now this is a big bird. We want to think of how well they're built. Try an experiment. Hold your head still. and Look up to the ceiling, down the floor, look left, look right. You can move your eyes up, down, left, and right because we actually have six muscles to do so. When you watch Elle here, her eyes are not able to move because there's no muscles to move those eyes. This is a really big bird. This is my biggest bird. And she's not nearly as heavy as people think. This bird here only weighs five and a half pounds. Birds, especially owls, are nothing but feathers. I'm not even touching skin yet. But for a five pound animal, you can see she has large eyeballs. They're bigger than mine. And what that's gonna do is if you had owl sized eyeballs, your eyeballs would be the size of dodgeballs. And if you had dodgeball sized eyeballs in your head, you'd look a whole lot funnier. But what they're gonna do is the muscles to move those eyes will cause that head to be too heavy. So the owl's eyes will never move. Instead, does an owl have a flexible neck? Yeah. Can an owl spin your head all the way around? No, it's physically impossible. Now, we have seven vertebrae in our neck, and depending on how flexible you are, you have a decent range of motion. She actually has 14, so she has a much larger range of view. Now, having big muscles means they're going to be more body weight, and for a flying animal, weight is your enemy. So with this little girl here, she has 14, neck mus 14 vertebrae and extremely flexible neck muscles. She can rotate her head 210 degrees. She cannot spin it all the way around. It's physically impossible. Now, owls have very good nocturnal vision. As well as you can see right now in your room is how well she can see in complete darkness with no starlight, no moonlight. But the owl's best sense is their sense of hearing. Now, these feathers here are just that, feathers. They make her look big and fierce. And on males, they'll even be bigger. Her ears are actually these little crescent shaped ears. Now every other feather on her body is flat and that's gonna give her that wonderful mimicry to blend into the background. These feathers that you can see around the eyes and those little crescent shapes, they look like frost or snowflakes. And what those are gonna be is they can actually be articulated. Now if you watch her, sometimes she moves her head up and down and does like a little dance. That's because owls have one ear hole high and one ear hole low right by that beak right there. And what that's going to do is that's going to turn her ears into like a satellite dish. And it can be tuned and focused to listen to a single spot. And with her eyes focused to a single spot, she can hear. She can hear a mouse breathe at over 400 yards. And she'll wait for that prey to make a mistake. And as soon as that prey breaks cover, she'll fly under full power all the way through the darkness of night and grab a hold of it with these huge talons here. And she grabs a hold of that prey. And that's special because the owl's wings make no noise. There's a lot of wind here in the room now, but there is no noise. The owls have specialized feathers that make no noise during flight. So she can be all the way and grab a hold of that prey with these huge talons here before they ever know what's even happening for us. Now the expression wise old owl isn't true. Now, I love working with her, but she is not a very intelligent animal. She doesn't have to be because her owls are good at one thing. And that one thing is killing. And these are extremely good killing. Most of your predators aren't going to be able to kill prey twice as large as themselves. Owls routinely do that for us. Now, this little call that she's doing, Elle here is a captive red bird. She's been with me since she's been 14 days old. 
This call right here is basically a toddler talking to mom and dad going, hey, 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 hey. You're not that funny. And she's just trying to tell me and remind me that she's here. She has just now started to do her normal vocalization of hooting at nighttime this spring for us. Now, this is a large bird of prey. She has a six foot wingspan right now and she is weighing five and a half pounds. If you've watched some of our live Facebooks, you've actually seen me train Elle here. She has to earn her food. She flies from perch to perch on command. And when she does it right, she gets a piece of food. Parents, you may be able to start doing that with your children. Have them earn their food. And it'll do well. Large, powerful feet that can do up to 500 pounds of pressure and silent wings, making them the ninja of the animal world. Excellent eyesight, but even better hearing to find her food. But think about the senses. Look at that nose. Does she have a good sense of smell like some of the other animals? No. And with that, one of our owl's favorite things to eat is actually skunks. Because if you can't smell it, skunks actually a very common black and white animal that nobody else eats at nighttime for us. Now, the Eurasian eagle owl, largest owl species on the planet, same genus as our great horn. That's why we have the similarity. But this animal is exempt from the rules. All of our birds of prey are federally protected animals. And this time of year, we're starting to see young animals. You can see young white-tailed deer. Some birds fall out. If you do find wildlife, you are not allowed to pick it up and raise it at your own. Best thing you can do is contact your local TWRA game warden and or look online for your local or closest wildlife rehabilitator. Our wildlife needs to be kept wild. So don't think picking something up and trying to help it out is the right thing for us. So that's where we're gonna think about this wonderful predator here. In captivity with me, 25 to 35 years is not uncommon. Some of them have actually lived up to 50 years. This am one is, right now her flying weight is five and a half pounds, but some of these birds, when they get large enough and they're found in the northern part of their range, they can be up to 10 pounds. That's the size of our bald eagles here. Hence the name Eagle Owl. All right, here's our last and newest exhibit for the summer reading program this year. Our little friend is unnamed currently. We're going to have a little naming contest for our virtual friend here with our little baby, our red kangaroo. Now, our little boy here is actually a lot older than what he looks. He's only five pounds today, but what we're looking at is almost a nine-month-old baby. Because as our kangaroo here is an amazing marsupial, we have to remember the characteristics that make mammals mammals. Now, what we have is live birth. And when this little guy here was born alive almost nine months ago, he was born about the size of a jelly bean. And he had no hair on his body, and he had to climb into his mother's pouch. And inside the mother's pouch, the mothers are gonna feed them what? Milk. So live birth, mama feeds you milk, now he has this extremely soft fur coat here, having hair. Now mammals have to have hair, even though they may not always have to have hair. When you look at me and Mr. Matt, we don't have our hair anymore. Where these little guys here are born hairless, but then they get it as they grow up and mature. So live birth, having hair, mama feed you milk, that last important characteristic is warm blooded. Now this little guy here has spent most of his life so far living in his mother's pouch. But he's starting to get hopping around and that's when he came to live with us. He's gonna be one of our programming exhibits. Now as a marsupial, you don't always have to have pouches, but we can have the favorite and only marsupial we have here in North America is our possum. Now possums get a bad rap, but they're gonna do a helpful job. Like we've been trying to teach you, everybody today has a job, a niche, and possums are gonna be wonderful in that they love to eat bugs and ticks and fleas and other carrion, dead things. And that's what's special. When our possums give birth, they give birth to about 30 babies at one time. And when they give birth to those 30 babies, they sleep during the entire process. And on average, eight of them will make it inside mama's pouch and start drinking milk. They are blind and they're hairless and they look like little inchworms and they have to get inside mama's pouch to drink milk. Now our kangaroo here is not native to Tennessee. This is definitely a Australian animal. This is a red kangaroo. Now he doesn't have very much red right now because he's still young, but he has these five digits on his front feet. Good nose with that sense of whiskers for that large ears. Now you can see he's already starting to move his ears around to listen and good eyesight. 
But what makes our kangaroo so special is on this young guy here is the hind foot. And that's where we have to teach you some Latin. When we look at the hind foot here, I know, you can see why we call them macropods. This is his entire foot. That's his ankle. And this whole thing is his foot. There's one toe here on the outside. This big toe here is the second digit with three and four on the inside. And he has this long, powerful tail. Even though this guy's still young, he can still hold his body weight with this tail. And that's where they're gonna hop using that for balance as well as a way to protect himself. In the wild, our kangaroos are gonna be found living in large groups and it's called mobs. And that's where the large males will be bigger than me. Standing six foot one, six foot four, 110 to 200 pounds. And they have massive upper body strength and they will use that to protect their family, their group. They're able to take down large predators. In the wild, the main predator for our kangaroos is gonna be the dingoes. These are the dogs and what they'll do, the wild dog. The kangaroo males will protect the young while the females will hop away and they will be able to actually grab a hold of a dog that's very heavy and drown it if they can find a body of water. The strong tail can be used almost as a weapon and knock things away for this. But these large toes here on this hind foot, that macropod, that large toenail there can even disembowel you. And that's where they will be able to cut things open and eviscerate. Disembowelment is when they open up your stomach and your intestines spill out all over the floor. Evisceration is where they can slice the femoral artery and you bleed out. But when you look at this cute little boy right here, you can't imagine that happening. But these animals do have to protect themselves in the wild. Now, like Tennessee, they are a little problematic in their native land of Australia. Kangaroos have gotten very used to living with mankind in our urban and r r rural areas where those get together. Kangaroos can become very accustomed to being around mankind like our white-tailed deer. And they have to have population controls for that. But as a marsupial, it is very difficult because they are very prolific at having young. So we have an amazing, strong, powerful, but a little baby still, of our red kangaroo. And if you continue to watch us on, on the company Facebook page, Animology, you'll be able to see our little boy here. We'll start the naming contest to come up with the best name for him for us. Now, I hope you enjoyed our program today. Make sure you keep up with your Putnam County Public Library for their summer reading programs with the videos and posts that Miss Chelsea is going to do for us. If you have any questions, you can send messages to her. If we get enough good ones, we'll be able to do a, maybe a virtual party at the end of the summer reading program. So I hope you all enjoyed the program today. I appreciate you being able to tune in. Sorry I didn't get to see you in person. But parents, if you enjoyed what your public library is doing, continue to support them. They make it possible for me, for presenters like this, to come and visit you, even though it's not in real time, in real life, but you're still able to see the content for our program. I want you all to have a good day. Remember, to have a job like mine, you have to do well in school, and you have to have lots of knowledge. And the best way to get the knowledge is from your public library with our reading. So parents, make sure you continue to support your public library, as well as the sponsors that help your Putnam County Public Library. You all have a good day. Hopefully I'll be able to see you again soon in person. But if not, we'll see you again on a virtual platform. Thank you all very much. Bye-bye.